It's Platt. And today we try a beer from Brazil. That's next with Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer we have today is Zinu Black Beer. A uh, very interesting story of this beer. It's not a traditional story of somebody who's home brewing, starts a brewery, and da da da. A little different story of this one. Uh, the brand itself was found in 1987 by Ann Ladich and uh, Alan Ames. They are a husband and wife duo that uh, owned a hotel in Vermont. But there's a little more to the story. Alan, get this, Alan is a beer historian. Some people even refer to him as the Indiana Jones of beer. Now, I did not know this was an option for a career. I want to talk to my high school guidance counselor because I, I wish I'd have known this 30 years ago is all I'm saying. Alan, if you're watching this, get, get, call me. Call me. I, if you need an assistant, I'm your guy. But anyway, uh, they decided in 1987 to take a trip to Brazil to kind of study some indigenous brews, local brews. And while, while doing their research, they ran across a recipe dating all the way back to 1557 of a dark beer-like brew made in uh, the rainforest area or in you know the Amazon River tributary. And they decided, hey, let's kind of recreate this beer the best we can, or whatever. And, and they were going to do a, a contract project. And they decided to contract uh, locally in Brazil. They wanted to keep this thing very Brazilian, you know, again, as an indigenous brew. They ended up naming the beer Zinyu after the Zinyu River, which is a major tributary to the Amazon. Like I said, they contracted with a Brazilian brewery uh, in Santa Cantarina, Brazil. After they you know, went through some trials and kind of tweaked the recipe, finally finished it, got through all the permitting and stuff like that. They decided to bring the beer to the U U.S. to premiere. Now, they didn't go to the Great American Beer Festival or a nightclub bar show type thing. They premiered it at the CIA. Not that CIA, but the Culinary Institute of America in New York City. Uh, apparently, uh, Alan and uh, his wife, Anne, had more connections in the culinary world, and they kind of went that route. I think they took it to the tasting panel in Chicago, but it worked out. They quickly gained some traction. Before you know it, they were exporting to 20 different countries. Again, 1988, and they're you know going into the early 90s. This type of beer, there just wasn't that. It wasn't. I'm trying to think. The only other Brazilian beer I remember at the time was one called I think it's called Brahma, which is now I think part of the AB InBev, you know deal but that was it and as far as like dark lagers that weren't from germany good luck finding one so it was kind of unique quickly gained traction and i guess after a few years of this thing really growing they got kind of tired of managing water and the couple sold the brand in 2001 to a brazilian brewery uh cervejas premium brazil when they took the brand they decided to kind of do a reboot uh they changed the label the original label had a map of the Zinu river uh, they also decided to kind of flesh out a small line of uh, Zingu beers. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, today, this beer is found in 35 different countries. And apparently, they contract out the brewing because according to the label, uh, this beer is brewed by Cervejas Premium Brazil, St. John, Canada. So, <laughs> apparently, they're contracting it out. I, I don't know how... Maybe they own a satellite brewery in Canada. I, I don't know, but I, I found that uh, quite interesting on the box. Real quick, let's talk about some of those other brews that they do. Right now, if you go to the website, it's just this Zinyu and a Zinyu Gold. 4.7% ABV. It's a pale lager, kind of unique. It is made with both rye and torrified wheat. Now, you just don't see that in the beer world. You'll see rye and wheat together in like a mash bill for a bourbon or a whiskey or something like that. But you don't see that in beer. Uh, I've seen, you know, there's a few beers that are rye, that have rye in them, and there's a ton of wheat beers. But I can't off the top of my head think of one that with rye and wheat together with barley. Um, if you know of any, please leave in the comment section. Off the top of my head, I'm kind of going blank. So I find that unique. They also, at one time, I don't know if they still produce some or whatever, but it's not on the website. They produced a... Uh, a Weiss version and a red, and I think the red at one time had gained a little traction, but apparently not anymore. If you see any of those, jump on them because they're probably pretty rare. Well, before we try this particular beer, though, let's check out stats. So 
So today, before we uh, try this particular beer, I want to talk about the style that it's based off of. Uh, they, they were basing this off a German style called a Schwarz beer. Uh, which is a little uncommon. It's a dark lager, but a little different than their other dark lagers. Uh, let's start with the numbers. ABV 3.8 to 4.9. This is a sessionable beer. You can have a couple and, and be just fine. Uh, IBUs 22 to 30. There's hops there, but nothing major. And SRM 25 to 30. It's a black beer, so it's going to be naturally dark. Uh, Color-wise, we're going from dark brown to black. Even though this is a dark beer, it pours clear. There's no haze if you, you, know, if you held it up to light. The beer has a soft body. So between a soft body, lower ABV, this is a fairly easy drinking beer. Uh, it does have a medium finish, though. It will sit on the palate for a little bit. I'm not, not a long finish, but it'll sit there for a second. Uh, low malt sweetness. The malts you're going to pick up in this beer is more of the roasty notes, your classic kind of coffee-ish notes, uh, instead of that malt sweetness that hits you in the front of the tongue. Low hop bitterness and aroma, or low hop aroma and flavor. Low plus or a little bit more bitterness. They're all going to be low, but the bitterness out of the three will stick out the most. Uh, finally, where does this beer differentiate itself from the other dark lagers, let's say a box style or a Dunkel, is the malt sweetness uh, or the lack of it. This can be a drier beer. The malt, like I said, is going to come out in roasty notes. It can be a slightly astringent, you know, in that kind of coffee espresso style. It's, it's not going to be just that toffee, caramel, you know, uh, little toasted bread kind of notes that you'll get, you know, in a other, you know, other styles of dark lager. It, like I said, this is a little drier to it, uh, just a little different than those traditional German uh, dark lagers. Well, that being said, let's drink this lager. Oh, yeah, it pours nice and dark. It's clear, but it is dark. I can see through, but it is dark. Uh, very, very dark brown, though. I, I can tell it's a very dark. Reminds me of some of the classic really dark porters. Uh, do get about a half a finger of uh, kind of lightish khaki head. It's uh, going for a smell. Oh, yeah, I definitely pick up. No real hops on the nose. You get malt, but it's a dark malt. It's it's those kind of chocolate, like the dark chocolate coffee espresso kind of vibe. More like a the similar to like a Guinness Stout that's kind of drier. You don't get a, you know it's dark, but you don't get a lot of marked sweetness. That's kind of the nose on this thing. Let's go in for a dive. Ooh, that is nice. That, you know, that might be, if you're wanting to get a friend into something like a Guinness Stout or the Stouts, this might be the, the stop before. Uh, I think something like, you know, like a Bach should be fairly approachable. It's going to be higher ABV, but sweeter. It's still body-wise, you know, very drinkable. This might be the next stop between a Bach and then giving them to the bigger Stouts and Porters. A little drier finish, but not dry, not not that astringent. There's still a little malt sweetness. There is those, like I said, a darker chocolate note, but somewhere in there you can find a little bit of milk chocolate in there too. So it's not, again, like you 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 know if you've ever tried real cocoa powder thing that like milk chocolate, you, you quickly find that mistake. This sits somewhere kind of in between, which is kind of interesting on the on kind of a chocolate scale. You know, again, lower ABV beer, soft body, but really has those nice, complex, darker malt notes. This this is something I, I can have two or eight of. <laughs> yeah, no, that that is real nice, well-executed beer. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time.
Bottoms up.